We got them. Whoever has this technology can do anything. Ah! We gotta save my dad's tech before they destroy the world. Hold it, hold it. These things are warm. Yeah. So hot. You got the winter suit. I mean, uh, first I guess I gotta say happy birthday to my oh, boy you, Jesse, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. I gotta ask though, like, what, how, is it funner to play the good guy or the bad guy? I know, like, you know, I don't want to spoil it, but you know, some of y'all mm -hmm. both sides of this. But I don't know. know. It's, it, it, it's. I think this one was pretty fun, but it's also the project, though. It's also like, you know, the, the directors and writers what they set up, and and it's not like a bad guy, bad guy. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, I'm not playing like Charlie Manson or something like that. Like, I'm, <laughs> I'm, uh, you know, playing a guy that's, a, you know, in a movie that's. A little bit more energy and and not super super real, you know, playing a character as well. So, but it yeah. was fun. It was yeah. fun, and especially like, you know, when I was talking to the kids, the, the back and forth, you know, there's plenty of times that they cracked me up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Did did you get to go to a school dance? I mean, because I know the part is these, these kids go to get the experiences. But did, did you do the yeah. prom and all that I, stuff? I and, did. We had um. Uh, in junior high school, a high school into proms. Yeah, I did go to school dances, uh, and we would have them like at school or like at some other, you know, little house parties. Or um, I did, I did. Yeah, that was a, you know, I was a social kid. I was running around getting into trouble, doing things I should not be doing. So I was out, I was, I was out there. Man, I remember, I remember, I, I went to uh, prep school in Chicago, and then I went to, like uh, uh, public school, and in prep school people were dancing like this. <laughs> you know they were they were super nervous, and then I remember going to homecoming, uh, and it's like I forgot that song like da da na, do it, oh uh, whatever, and I was like boing, like it was it was way different. Let me just yeah. say that where I'm like yo, you can do that, dude. Yeah. Yeah. So I was like yeah, it was it was different. It was definitely different. That a UAP. What? Unidentified aerial phenomenon. UFO wasn't working for you guys? I've been waiting a long time to see one of these up close. This technology is going to change everything. Hey, there's something moving. Analyzing planet. Well, I mean, both of you guys born in Chicago. I mean, how, I mean, what what sparked that dream to to come chase Hollywood? I mean, it was oh, a theater. Yeah. I know Chicago has big theater community, but like, what I mean, uh, what was it in Chicago that has brought so many people out to the big screen in, in Hollywood? Oh, interesting yeah. question. Uh, what well, you have an interesting story? Well, for me, uh, you know, I, I was kind of a math dude, and I, you know, I was starting to, I was going to get into finance, obviously. I mean, oddly enough, but um, my best friend's mom says, hey, you're good at imitating people. I was kind of a quiet kid. I, was, I wouldn't say I was necessarily like a shy kid, but I was quiet. And my way of communicating was just like, oh, he, you know, he was doing this and I would imitate them. And I said, you should try acting. And I was like, well, I don't know. I'm like, I've never done a play, never did anything. So I had just watched this movie, To Serve With Love Part, part One. Oh. With Sidney Poitier. Yeah, yeah. Oh, man. And I love that movie. And I was like, wow, he's the man, right? I just love that movie and how it made me feel. A week later, To Serve With Love Part Two was being cast in Chicago. And they were looking for maybe extras or something. So 3,000 kids came in and auditioned. And seven auditions later, I was testing for one of the kids in the classroom. I didn't really know what I was doing. I didn't get cast. Yeah. But they stuck me in the movie anyway as like a featured extra. And I got to see... Sidney Portier for three months do his thing, wow. and I was like, I'm gonna, I'm gonna try to be wow. an actor. Wow. That's what I'm gonna do. Wow, that's incredible. I, I had uh, no vision of acting or that it was even a attainable job until after college, into my you know mid to late twenties. Uh, but I was in film school. I'd love to tell stories, write stories, produce stories. I was a DP, I was a cinematographer. So I was always like around visual storytelling. I knew it was a really important, powerful medium. Um, and then just started putting myself in it. Um, and then started doing commercials and then went back to teaching high school and then 
figure I, I still had a bug. But that was kind of cool. That was that felt liberating, and there was something I didn't really know the the role that the actor played in the storytelling process. Honestly, I thought yeah, everybody else writes it and makes it, and then you just get an actor to do it. But the actor controls so much of what is communicated and can and can create so much. So uh, that gave me a little bit of bug in my in my late twenties, and then I decided to try it in New York, and you know, did a tiny bit of theater and Law and Order and the basic uh, you know the, the New York starter kit. Yeah. <laughs> did, you, did you do a lot of guest stars? Yeah, I did. I did a few. I did a few guest stars. Uh, yeah, I was all about Very. the guest stars, dude. I did NYPD Blue like three times. Wow, three yeah. different characters. <laughs> three different. <laughs> well, man, I, I, I appreciate the time. Always, always love talking to you guys. Yeah, and, uh, you I can't too. wait to see. It was a fun movie, so I, I can't wait to the audience. I can't wait to my kids see it. Actually, exactly. You know, they can have fun with it. But okay. thanks for the time, bro. Appreciate you. Yeah. Dude, thank you so much, man. Good to see you.